Welcome back. We are about to head off to Wangshu Inn to receive something from afar. Presumably in involves food, considering the event, uh, what looked like fried rice card thingy. Let's, uh, let's head on over. All right. Kitty. Are we going all the way down? I think we might be heading all the way down, yeah. With the wind. Fair enough. What do we have here? A waitress. Oh. Wang Xiuin now hiring. Urgently seeking one temporary chef willing to pay top flora Ooh. salary negotiable. I like what I hear. Paimon, we're okay-ish chefs. Look, traveler, an urgent hiring notice and they're paying top flora. I Ooh. noticed that. Oh, Paimon likes the sound of that. <laughs> Me too. Strange. Why would Wang Xiuin suddenly need a new chef? Well, a temporary chef, and probably because they're swamped with ex excess uh, visitors. Hmm, you're right. It is strange. We could just ask them. Do you think something happened to Yin Xiao? No. That guy barely lets anyone ever set foot in his kitchen. Doesn't exactly seem like the type to hire help. He's. We've um. We've assisted him before. Maybe, well, no, we, we even cooked for him once, I think. Forget the context of that, but we did. The notice says interested parties should go upstairs and talk to the innkeeper, Huayan. Should we go and see what's up? Uh, you want to check up on, uh, Yan Chao? You don't, you want to check up on how much the job pays, don't you? Uh, well, that. <laughs> I have to check up on Yan Chao, of course. Of course. You know, if we have time. Now right, let's head up. Boss, uh, there's really no need for this. It's just a little burn, that's all. It won't get in the way of my work. Uh, Smiley Yun Chao. Uh, oh, oh. I mean, where did you burn yourself? I don't see anything that looks especially bad. I guess I'm not getting close up on your hands, but... Perhaps not, but continuing to work will only hinder your recovery. You need to rest for a few days. We'll figure something out. That's what they mean very temporary then. I mean, covering from a burn, depending on how severe it is, probably not more than a week or two. Boyan! Yan Chow! Oh? Traveler and Paimon! What brings you to this neck of the woods? Top Mora! We know we saw your hiring notice downstairs. And we decided to come check out, um, check up on you, Chow. <laughs> I thought so, Paimon. Don't think I didn't catch that. Uh, I knew we shouldn't have posted that notice. It's really nothing to worry about. I'm fine, I swear. How kind of you. My thanks to you both. And thanks on Yan Xiao's behalf, too. There's nothing to be embarrassed about, Yan Xiao. Just tell them what happened. Oh, all right. Well, basically, we had a lot of guests pouring in for the lantern, right? Right. Things got busy, I started rushing, and I ended up accidentally burning my hand while plating a dish. Isn't that just part of being a chef? Like a professional chef especially? Cuts and burns? Why does it sound like you? Well, you know what they say. Play with fire long enough and you're bound to get burned. Yeah. Even the best chefs slip up sometimes. A anyway, it's nothing, uh, just a tiny burn. I can still... Can you grasp your knife? Now, now. I don't want you pushing yourself. You'll only make it worse. And then you'll be looking at more than just a couple of days off to recover. But the lantern rites only just finished. And we're still getting tons of guests. Now's mm. not a good time for me to rest. That's the point of the temporary chef. But, uh, 
Plus, lots of the guests are visiting from other nations. Ooh, we can't just Fontaine. bring in some random chef off the street. We have a reputation to uphold. I I refuse to let someone else ruin the good name we've made for ourselves here. Hey, I'm not gonna ruin your name. <laughs> Listen to Paimon you. Paimon might. Anyone would think that you're the boss and not me. I mean, he's the chef. He is the boss. But he's not wrong. Yan Chao was one of the favorites in the Masterful Chefs Tournament. Ooh. No matter how you look at it, his are big boots to fill. <laughs> was that... Is that a, a reference? It just added the full. I don't mean to boast, but any chef of my caliber probably has their own restaurant to look after. It's not going to be easy to find someone who's got the skills and has the time to help us out. Well, for Top Mora, I am more than willing to lend a few days. Mm. Looks like we might have to increase the pay we're offering even further. Oh, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I just don't have time for maybe a million Mora or five. I might be able to offer a few days. That is my price per day. Thank you very much. Hmm. Do we know anyone that's a good chef and has the time to help out? Whoever could it be? Sometimes the answer you're looking for is right under your nose. Oh, of course, you! <laughs> oh, right. Yes. Now I think about it. I do recall hearing good things about your cooking ability. It's okay. I suppose I'd added you to my mental list of people who can hold their own in a combat situation, but forgot you can cook. I am trained by the ver our very own Shang Ling. Um, why are you even keeping a mental list of people who can fight? In case he needs to throw out ruffians. <laughs> Maybe a story for another time. More importantly... I'm sure Yan Shao would be comfortable leaving his kitchen in your hands, if anyone's. I mean... What do you think, Yan Shao? Why, on there is, uh... Quite the fighter himself, too, if I remember right. Well, since it's you, I suppose that's better than anyone else. Oh, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. That vote of confidence. What do you think, Traveler? Should we do it? You said something about increasing the pay. <laughs> I did say that, didn't I? Well, I'm a man of my word. You'll be compensated generously for your work. That's all I needed to hear. As long as we have a same definition of generous. I should warn you that cooking for customers is quite a different ball game from cooking for yourself. So oh, yeah. I'll stick around the kitchen over the next few days to help smooth things over. Speed and uniformity, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, so he's not leaving the kitchen after all? Just not exacerbating his burn. I believe there's some spare kitchenware here at the inn. Boss, would you mind? Of course, of course. I'll take care of it. Whew. Nice. All done. Come, take a look. This was made with your measurements in mind. Where did you get my measurements? This carpentry is incredible. You missed your true calling. Well, we, we, we've actually seen him engage in that kind of carpentry before, too. When repairing the, uh... The walkway and stuff. Ah, it's nothing. A little handicraft and elbow grease goes a long way. All right, Yan Xiao. I'll leave you to take it from here. All the trouble of building a new stovetop? What was wrong with the original? That's a good question. Boy, you really hate when people touch your stuff, huh? I guess so. No, no, it's nothing like that. As boss always says, hire who you trust and trust who you hire. I just thought the original setup might be a little, um, tall for you. Well, no, Pylon's not the one cooking. It's me. And she floats anyways. Well, everyone looks short compared to you. Uh, um, uh, anyway, as I was saying, cooking for guests is different from cooking for yourself. Not only do you have to execute on taste, 
aroma, and appearance. But you also need to ensure speed, precision, and consistency. Right. That's what I thought. Every dice has to be basically the same. Stuff like that. Having the right equipment is a big part of that. Ill-suited equipment doesn't just make the job more tiring, it also slows you down. And paying customers don't have unlimited patience. Need a razor-sharp knife. Sometimes cooking is all about being well-prepared. That's how you ensure speed. Mise en place? Okay, and what about precision and consistency? Ah, precision all comes down to using your eyes. Where to slice into a particular cut of meat, mm. how much oil to use, how to tell when a dish is done cooking. Yeah. When you cook for yourself, you can always add salt if it's too bland or add water if it's too salty. You can tweak the taste as you go, but in a restaurant, there's not that much room for trial and error. Right. Every dish that comes goes out the door has to be exactly the same quality. I'm not too worried about that. Worst case scenario, Paimon can deal with any subpar <laughs> dishes by oh God. making sure they get properly disposed of. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Paimon's mouth will be our trash can. Um... Fish's head is still huge. That tuna, I believe, probably. The final thing you have to focus on is consistency. You have to be able to handle the most challenging orders with the same level of technique and skill as the easiest ones. Right. This is particularly important when you have guests from all over, each with their own tastes and preferences. You have to cater to their own dietary needs while also giving them the opportunity to enjoy our local delicacies. If anyone says anything back, I am going to throw a knife at them. Uh, this last point is making Paimon's head spin. <laughs> Don't worry. Matter of fact, someone as well-traveled as you may even have a better handle on it than me once you get started. No. You're a professional chef who has years of experience. And of course, I'll be around to help you over the next few days. I don't think we'll have any trouble making all our guests feel right at home. All right. Um, familiarize yourselves with our workstation. Very good. I guess that's our cutting board, that uh, log cut out there. There's no time to lose, so let's get started. I imagine you probably have a good handle on the cooking side of things already. What you need to Close pay enough. attention to is remembering each table's order. Ooh. Try not to get them mixed up. I, um, I'll, I'll try. Oh, Paimon's memory is like a steel trap. This is going to be a cinch. You better not let me down, Paimon. I'm counting on you. At the end of the day... Did it go well? Uh, what chicken are we on again? Damn it, Paimon. Table one was onions, but no chilies. Table two was chilies, but no onions. Paimon. Table three was, uh, Aww. table three was chilies, but hold the chilies. <laughs> what the? Paimon, this is why you need to write things down. The way this doesn't happen. All the guests have already finished eating. Ah! Was Paimon just sleep floating? You know, if you're capable of floating when you sleep, I don't want to ever hear you talk about how tiring it is again. You've been talking nonsense since about halfway through the day. Uh, we didn't even get a break in the middle. Paimon's brain has turned to mush. Is it always this busy here? Yes, probably. Well, no. But the food industry isn't easy, Paimon. No, but this is peak season. You both did a mighty fine job for your first time serving guests at the inn. Luckily, all our customers were familiar faces this time around, so we didn't get any strange requests. Otherwise, today would have been even more challenging. Mm -hmm. Don't give Paimon a panic attack. No strange requests? Someone asked. For almond tofu drizzled in soy sauce. <laughs> Even Paimon has never tried that combination. I 
I don't know. It doesn't sound half bad. I mean, if... <laughs> <laughs> it's a wide world out there. People have all kinds of different tastes. Being able to cater to all is the real essence of Liyue cuisine. Mm. Also, the thing about requests is that they're usually very specific. So as long as you do what they asked, you're unlikely to have any issues. What's really tricky is when guests give you free reign to do anything you want. I mean, if that's the case, I feel like I just give them the standard dish. Uh, excuse me, are you still open by any chance? Mr. Deep Sea Diving Suit. Huh? Paimon knows that voice. <gasps> Let's go check it out. Yeah. Uh, what oh. should we do? It doesn't look like anyone's here. Uh, if only we'd gotten here a bit sooner. It's... It's our magician duo. It's all right. If we start building a campfire now, we'll be eating before too long. Oh, cool. I always wanted to see you two. Lenny. With his surpassing talent, this eminent magician has created a truly amazing magic show that has fixed all of Fontaine's attention on him. He's usually cheerful, wearing a on confident smile on his face, wearing a confident smile on his face, regardless of who he is speaking with. He is, he is composed and assured, with a tendency to interweave magic tricks into conversations, lighting all those he deals with. Only those closest to him know that his that this image he has created for others is all just a part of his and of the enthralling magic show. In other words, he's always on the clock. Right. Besides, if anyone's to blame, it's Linny. So busy being a greedy culture vulture that he <laughs> lost track of time. Aw. Well, as his sister and assistant, it is your job to keep him on track, is it not? Lynette. Linny's twin sister, a quiet and gentle young girl known throughout Fontaine as the great magician Linny's assistant. On the stage, she is focused and alert while her offstage persona is shy and reserved, rarely revealing any expression. She uses standby mode as an excuse to avoid unnecessary social interactions. <laughs> I like you. Only her valued family members can see past the mysterious front she puts up to disguise her true feelings. How many other family does she have? Her brother and anyone else? Parents? Other siblings? to see you guys, and to meet you two. Paimon? So, is the Traveler here? Of course. Greetings. Traveler, Paimon! What a nice surprise! It is a nice surprise. I didn't think I'd meet you two until much later. Paimon was gonna say the same thing! We're just lending a helping hand at the end. You, uh, you fill the three of them in. Anyway, so that's how we ended up here. But what about you guys? Don't tell us. Uh, father sent you on another mission. <laughs> father? So not actually father? Is this one of those secret spy code names kind of things? No, quite the opposite, actually. We're in Liyue on vacation. And while we're here, I thought a cultural tour might be in order. Eh? That sounds like fun. Uh, uh, father said we deserve some rest after everything that happened recently. Otherwise, it could jeopardize our next mission. Mm. It's not every day we get this kind of opportunity. Lenny thought it might be fun to spend some time in Liyue, especially since it's lantern rite season. And Lenny would be 100% correct. Though, you really should have been here for the lantern rite. You missed out on quite the event. And the cultural tour Linny mentioned we could hardly pass up the opportunity to watch a Liyue style magic show oh yeah although I think they call it conjuring here mm, I haven't actually heard uh, in our time here we've seen conjuring tricks incorporated into a Liyue opera show oh and even a wushu dance it was amazing you got to see both of them nice 
kind of wish I could have watched uh, another opera. Yunjin is absolutely amazing. So, we decided to stay here for a few more days to see what other forms of inspiration this land might have in store for us. Well, we could, uh, inspire you with some good food. We visited Granny Roshin in Chingsa Village not long ago, and today we continued our cultural tour in the area around here. And you are well-traveled. Sounds like you've hit every corner of Liyue. In the end, though, we lost track of time. We haven't even eaten anything yet. Well, we could help you there. <laughs> and speaking of eating, as you know, seafood is a big part of both Liyue and Fontaine cuisine, but it's cooked very differently here. Right. We simply had to try some local seafood after coming all this way. That's another reason why we decided to extend our trip. Mm, sounds good to me. You want to try some now? Oh, need any recommendations? What have you tried so far? That fish one with the misleading name. What? Sounds bland, but it's drowning in hot chilies. Misleading name. Oh, you mean black back perch soup? You're right. Oh. The name doesn't give much away. No, yeah. <laughs> it looked and smelled so appetizing that Lynette took a huge mouthful, <laughs> blissfully unaware that she was about to set her mouth on fire. Aww. She could barely speak for the rest of the day after that. Poor Lynette. Uh, luckily, that wasn't a huge adjustment for her. I was just thinking it, but I didn't want to say it. <laughs> was that you rumbling, or that was that your stomach? It sounded like you were. It sounded like she was grumbling because of uh, their comments, but she did say they haven't eaten anything day or all day. That was different. What? Aren't you guys hungry too? Uh, yes, a little. Well, let's uh, give you some good food. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, I'm ready to eat. Traveler, I'm afraid we'll have to send you back to the kitchen now. No problem. You're three, I assume, very good friends of ours. I mean, from an A, we've done some stuff with so far, but I'm looking forward to officially meeting you guys eventually. Though, actually, it was you were probably introduced in one of the events I've missed. What would you like? Hmm, good question. I doubt we'll be able to decipher the menu, so why don't you recommend something? You should be pretty familiar with our tastes. Of course. Yeah, I know your tastes perfectly. Like the back of Paimon's hand. I'll figure it out. One more thing. Please, if you have a heart, don't make it spicy. I'm going to add all the Joyun chilies. Everyone in my inventory. I have hundreds. I thought the black back perch stew was actually pretty tasty. I bet it was. And now that you know it's spicy, you won't be caught off guard, right? Why don't we give it another chance? Well, you should try something new now. Once was more than enough. Mm. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm sorry, was that proper hopping over my workstation? <laughs> Fontaine, huh? No wonder they can't handle too much spice. Ooh. Still, if we make the food too bland, they might as well be eating back home. Oof. Ow. Shots fired. Uh, what do you recommend? Hmm. There's this crab and shrimp stir fry I know that could work. It's quite heavily seasoned, but it's a lot milder than it looks. It has a light but really satisfying flavor. Hmm. I do love stir fries myself. Ooh, that sounds perfect! What's it called? <laughs> well, this is where it gets interesting. They call it the Palace Jewels. Ooh. The crab roe is supposed to look like pearls of gold, and the shrimp meat, 
like chunks of jade. Hmm. Crab roe in a stir fry. Interesting choice. That's a pretty enigmatic name. Here's the recipe. When you're ready, go ahead and give it a try. All right. New recipe is going to be another five star. I only have the one so far. In each challenge of receiver of friends from afar, you must continuously prep, mix, and cook to make a dish that the guests want. Right. After you begin prepping, the indicator on the slider will move back and forth between each end. When the indicator points to the corresponding area, click on the button. To mark one instance of success, right? To begin mixing, hold the button. Make the indicator bar move over the sliding ring. And it points to the prompted area release to mark one instance of success. Fair enough. It's just repeating itself now. Once cooking is complete, you can plate and decorate the dish. Three elements of dishes can be decorated. The tableware, accessories, and add-ons. Each element has several decorations to choose from. Oh, cool. Well, let's start the cooking. All right. I assume I have all the ingredients I need. A fresh dish cooked using shrimp meat crab roe, salt, and snapdragon. People say of the dish, crab roe like pearls of gold, shrimp meat like chunks of jade. The mild flavors of the dish make it suited to those who want to taste the essential flavor of seafood. Some have rated the di this, dish, this dish as such. What do you get when you put crab on shrimp and add freshness onto freshness? A sumptuous and flavorful dish. The tenderness of the shrimp and the crab's flour the crab flowers, glutinous grains, grant it freshness, deliciousness, and that perfect mouthfeel. That is a massive opinion. Or, you know, what makes the perfect mouthfeel. Great disagreements will be had on that. The crab rose, uh, rose shines brighter than gold, and the shrimp glimmers like gems, forming a jeweled table her palace. All right, let's serve him up. Press at the right moment to prep. All right. Here we go. Ah. Come on. Here we go. made a mistake, but hopefully it doesn't matter. Nice. Nice snapdragon and something, something, something. It's good, but you gotta be a little faster. Mixing, prepare the bird eggs and flour. And paste it to the shrimp meat. a little uh, easier to miss. <laughs> Happy face. All right. Come on. Stir that fry. Nice. <laughs> I love her happy faces. And then it just goes back to the neutral expression. All right. Um, I think this complements the, uh, food a little better. Mmm, clouds adorn the sunrise. Let's see if we have something about the jade chamber. A gilded jade, ah, that actually fits. Aw, Finchy cake. Let's give him the Finchy cake. Beautiful. 
and see how they like it. Sorry for the wait. This dish is called the Palace Jewels. Enjoy. Yeah, that's a good looking shrimp. See some spring onion in there. You guys gonna eat? Mm. It's not spicy, I promise I didn't add all of my Jayun chilies. Um What you don't like shrimp? Ah uh, yes. We meant to say you two must be tired after a long day of work. Do you wanna eat with us? Sure. I just realized those shrimp are ginormous. It. Paimon is a little hungry. Mm. Well, if you insist, then who are we to refuse? <laughs> Paimon, uh, you guys, you should be careful. Paimon will eat the whole thing herself. She is like a black hole for food. Well, we'll still let our guests enjoy the first bite. Oh, right. Of course. You're still our customers. Uh, why aren't you eating? I think they invited us here for us to try it first. So they uh, know it's not terrible. The sauce looks a little overpowering. No, no. Oh, uh, according to Liyue custom, it's probably good table manners to let someone else go first. I don't know anything about Liyue table custom, but maybe. Lenny, any thought? Any thoughts? <clears throat> looks delicious, traveler. I guess I'll dig in first. Here goes. It Come on, it'll be good. What is it? Do you need some water? Not, no, Linny, Lynette. Water is the worst thing you can drink when you, something is too spicy. No, it's delicious. The flavor is so pure. It's drenched in sauce, but somehow it just enhances the natural flavor of the seafood. T try mm. it for yourselves. Um, uh, all right. We're not serving this with any rice or anything. Is it just the shrimp in the sauce? Mmm. Hmm. <laughs> what is that? Crab roe? See, Lynette? Not half bad, is it? Yep. You have quite the palate, Lynette. Just not for spicy stuff. No wonder it pairs so well with the shrimp meat. I've never seen it prepared this way before. According to the creator, Chewy crab, condiment <laughs> succulent shrimp, making a spectacular seafood uh, ensemble with a succulent flavor and luscious mouthfeel. Oh, Paimon, <laughs> nice wink. Uh, uh, Paimon doing impersonations is always a treat. The crab row glitters like pearls of gold, and the shrimp shines like chunks of jade. Hence its name, the palace jewels. <laughs> So that's where the name comes from. Huh. I suppose it's quite fitting then. Huh. It is. Was Paimon always this well-spoken? No. No. She absolutely is not. She just memorized what the recipe you said. She's just regurgitating what someone else wrote. This dish must be right up your alley, Lynette. Uh-huh. Did she eat it all? Uh, it's half gone already. <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> Probably when you were busy yapping away. And it wasn't your fault this time. I heard that in Liyue. The biggest compliment you can pay to the chef is to leave a clean plate. Mm. It's delicious. Thank you ever so much. I feel like that's the biggest compliment you can pay any chef anywhere. Well, maybe not. I think there are some cultures where you leave a small portion on the plate or something. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. Eat it all, guys. Eat it all. Quick. Mm -mm -mm. What are you still doing, Fremine? I think I'm finally getting the hang of chopsticks. There you go. They're really not too bad. Just a little bit of practice. Practice makes perfect. Huh, Fremine? Uh, yeah. Well, Linny and Lynette picked it up in no time, but they're naturally dexterous. Ah. Uh -huh. Unlike me, it's taken me a lot longer. 
But I'm slowly getting there. There you go. Oh, uh, speaking of chopsticks, in one of the shows we've seen here, someone performed a conjuring trick using a bowl and chopsticks. Oh. So if I want to be a good magician's assistant, oh. I need to keep practicing. Is this the classic, like, uh, cup and ball magic trick? Where, but they were moving the uh, bowls around with the, the chopsticks? That's, that's fun. I think they actually might have done that in the movie Kung Fu Panda. Lynette's not usually so forthcoming about what she likes. But this time, well, she's expressed it in more ways than one. I guess you've rubbed off on her too. Aww. <laughs> or maybe your cooking is simply too delicious to resist. You tell me, you enjoyed it too. The next time our paths cross in Fontaine, you'll have to fire up your cooking skills for my other siblings as well. Hmm. How does that sound? So you do oh, have other siblings. Master Chef? Sounds wonderful. I hope to meet your other siblings and this quote unquote father. Though actually now that I think about it, these other siblings might be a part of whatever this same program is. It sends you on missions. Um, questions for a future date. Um, whenever you're free, just set the date. Whatever you say, oh, great magician. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, then, I'll have to clear my schedule. Yes, but you have to pay me in magic shows. I really do love a magic. Where's Lynette? Oh, there she is. You talking to the cat? Let me guess where you're from. Calorie surplus detected. Digestion mode engaged. <laughs> A food coma, in other words. I've never seen you eat so much. Yeah. Well, Linny and I are usually careful about what we eat because we have to stay in performance shape. Right. That, plus, it's generally bad manners to overindulge at the dinner table. Right. But. Once in a while, it's nice to treat yourself in the company of family. Yeah, it's good. Gotta enjoy life every now and then. Besides, if I'd waited until my brothers were finished trying to outpolite each other, the food would have gone cold. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, it's good to see all three of you. Let's see where we're going next. We talk. Oh, talk to the chef again. Is flying over our workstation better than jumping? So your friends like the dish, huh? Well done. Not bad at all for your first day on the job. Yeah. There'll be more to come, so keep it up. Thank you. I guess that was part one. Gotta wait for part two. So... Is this something we... I guess just completing it got us that. Not having to be like perfect or anything. <laughs> Customers come from all corners of the world, bringing their very tastes with them. Meeting each of their needs is the first step to becoming a great chef. Don't know who's going to be here this time, but it looks like it's going to be tea. Oh no, that's just the generic. Until we know we're cooking. After a day's hard work, you and Paimon are now able to deal with the daily kitchen grind. That is, unless some truly pick or picky customers come calling. Alright. A slight interlude between the two days. I realized we have a new, uh... Version preview. Blades weaving betwixt brocade. Who are you, new character, presumably? Nice music, as always. It's up to me Ooh. to decide who I want to be, and to cut my own path. No one can tell me what to do. Nice, are you a dual wielder? The owner of Chioria Boutique. A tailor renowned throughout Fontaine. 
Ah, you're a tailor. It's up to me to decide who I want to be and to cut my own path. Heh. No one can tell me what to do. Cut, like with your swords or like fabric. Nice, she actually uses both swords. That's cool. That's fun. Oh, hey, with her. Maybe they're friends. Probably makes her clothes. Bottom line, never uh. let the wind get to you. Especially when you got a killer hairstyle like <laughs> mine. Oh, yeah. That's great. I haven't seen Artaki in a while, I think. When was the last time he had a banner? I know that. I know when. I remember when his first banner was because. It was the first December after I started playing. Come driving rain Ooh. or winds that churn. I shall return by blade alone, armed if barefoot, to my home. Kazuha. I am Kaidohara Kazuha, a wanderer who roams the land. Yes, you are. Since we are both travelers, let us journey together for a time. Absolutely, I've been wanting you. But I see who this is too. Perhaps we could take a walk by a riverbank or somewhere similarly fluvial. <laughs> and I also want Noivalet though. Ooh. I was regretful I didn't manage to get him the first time, but. This is tricky. Depending on the order of the banners, um, I, 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 I think I, I can tell I will, I'll probably want Chiori. I also want Arataki, but I think my priorities will be Noivalet and Kazuha here. Depending on how the banners work out, that may be easier said than done. For all I know, they'll be on the second banner together. Or maybe the first banner together. If they're on the second banner together, I guess I could save up for them. But of course, then that there's the question of what four stars are going to be with each banner and uh, if I want any of them. No new uh, four stars. Oh, what is this? More detailed rules. Chronicle to wish. Um, are we getting a free five star, maybe? Well, more detailed was right, but what? Oh, it's each of their preferred weapons. Nice. I think. What the hell is Chronicled Wish? You're just showing a bunch of the five stars. The ones that are on the standard... Actually, no, Yula's not on the standard banner. And I don't think Klee or Albedo is... Albedo are either. Nor are there normal weapons. Um, which makes me really curious as to what this is teasing. New weapon? That's uh, Chiori's weapon, I assume. Okay, now that I say it, is she actually Inazuman? The Knights of Favonius are currently coming up with long-term plans to promote the achievements of alchemy. The person in charge, Lisa, seems to have a good idea and has invited you and Paimon to assist. Oh, nice. To assist her. So that'll be a new event. Oh, it's got a crown, so this will be a a big event and also gets a free weapon of some sort staff I'm honestly not sure what kind of weapon that's going to be Ooh, some fun looking events here I always prefer the unique events over the combat ones pretty much without exception Is that Beto? Oh, is this gonna be another uh, 
bout of Merchant Paimon. And Interior Decorator Paimon. Huh. I guess we'll see. Feline Fortress Furtacy. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Yes. Your recent travels have seen you and Paimon encounter all manner of strange creatures. But in light of various factors, Paimon would still like to have some fun with cats. As you should. As such, you intend to return to Monset and drop by the cat's tail. The Great Phase Reaction Debate. This one sounds awesome. Jami, Jamie, the Emerta researcher who earlier developed the marvelous Phase Potion, has once again encountered trouble. As such, she has adopted more efficient enhancement measures and is waiting for the right person to help verify his work. Interesting. Don't know who that is or what the Phase Potion is, but it sounds like a Sumeru thing. Rolling Crossfire. The genius inventor of the guards has created a new kind of remote cannon. What does it launch? Slimes? In order to test its combat effectiveness, they are looking for professionals to participate in firing experiments. I mean, I can offer up Paimon as target practice. Well, interesting. I... I'm mostly curious what that mysterious... Yeah, the mysterious Ode to the Dawn Breeze is. Chronicled Wish. Maybe it means all of these characters are going to be on the standard banner now. I mean, I know Jean and Diluc were. And Mona. Maybe Klee, Albedo, and Eula are getting added. along with their respective weapons. Maybe. It's my only guess as to what it could possibly mean. Well, let's get back to the game though. All right. Let's begin day two. Mr. Yansha, who are we gonna meet today? Morning. The boss tells me that both new and returning customers have nothing but good things to say about you. Wonderful. Anyone new from Fontaine gonna be here today? <laughs> I have to admit, I was a little worried about throwing you right into the deep end. But it looks like you've got what it takes to handle the day-to-day -day here. Mm-hmm. I always do enjoy the pleased traveler face. So it should be plain sailing. Oh? Well, just as long as we don't oh. run into any extremely picky customers with unreasonably specific requests. <laughs> I'm right on cue. It's, um... Oh, she's actually from Sumeru, though. Interesting. Oh, have you had someone like that before? She is a very geometric personality. I just, I know very little about her other than I think her skill and burst involve, like, various shapes. Of course. The worst are those old scholars who have barely <laughs> cooked a day in their life, but think reading a stack uh, of books on the topic makes them the expert. And right on cue. Her irises, or I mean her pupils, are triangles. That's kind of cool. They criticize you for no reason, claiming your cooking method isn't faithful to the uh, original. Or that the flavor profile isn't authentic oh no. because you used an ingredient that wasn't in their beloved centuries-old version of the recipe. That's the worst. Cooking is not supposed to be rigid like that. Need, people need a chance to experiment, to change things. This is Wang Shuin. Hmm. It does have the look and feel of a time-honored establishment. Oh, this is actually the first time I've ever really heard you. In fact, actually, this was the first time in-game I've seen you, I think. Are those, like, rulers around here? Well, kind of. Whatever. Yeah, Faruzan. Enigmatic Machinist. Faruzan, the researcher from a hundred years prior. Are... Really? You look good for your age. Is a household name in Haravatat. But she is better known in Sumeru for uh, at large for her work in mechanics. Once she was trapped within a strange ruin and only escaped after much peril. Yet a century had passed for the world she emerged into. Oh, so she's not actually that old. Probably. 
and it was no longer the place she remembered. Whether, it's due, whether, it be, whether it be due to academic disagreements or the passage of time, she's quite a few things in to say about the current state of the academia, and is not afraid to put her sharp tongue to use in commenting about other researchers. This could go very poorly for us. However, she can be quite easy to talk to, so long as you call her Madame, that is. Well. I know that voice. Oh, innkeeper! We'll have each of your signature dishes, please, as fast as you can serve them. Nice one. The most expensive ones. Can you afford that? And all of them? And what do you mean, we? Farzan! Oops, uh, Madam Farzan. <laughs> hey there, madam. Oh my. Traveler, Paimon, whatever are you doing here? Uh, well, we'll be cooking for you today, it seems. We can ask you the same thing. Where'd you suddenly get the funds to go <laughs> sightseeing? And to <laughs> order the most expensive things on the menu? That's a good question. You're not only from a past time, apparently, but also... You're in academia. I can tell, I can promise you, it doesn't pay the best. It's not terrible, but it's not. The, it's definitely not the best. <laughs> I'm not here to sightsee. Exemplary scholars like myself are highly sought after by cruise operators in need of an onboard consultant as they travel oh. the world. Um. Really? Uh, an onboard consultant for what? Uh, uh, oh, it's Dory. And, uh, Layla? Please. Oh, slow down. Oh, none of us slept last night. Aw. How come Madame Farzan still has so much energy? <laughs> oh, if she's you really look exhausted. Old, I don't understand how she keeps going. I... I questionable about whether she really is in. Aren't you an elf? I don't know if I noticed that before. Layla with the permanently... Like, for someone whose whole gimmick is sleep, you are exceptionally tired. Layla of... Uh, uh, Rotawahis? I don't know. Can often be found sporting black eye bags and a groggy, sleepy expression. I believe it. I've seen it. It is said that she go when she goes to sleep, all sorts of strange things will occur around her. The sleepwalking eccentric, heaven-sent thesis, human calculator, the one who climbs the wall of Samuel barehanded. Uh, no wonder you're so exhausted. As such, although she has not been in the academia for very long, she is already the subject of many great, a, a great many strange nicknames. But strange as those monikers ought may be, she is stranger still. <sighs> it's all my fault. She's been like this ever since I told her I'd be paying the expenses. Oh, that's where the money's coming from. Well, Dory, better break out your pocketbook. Treasure of Dream Garden. Dory Sangama Bay. Master of the Palace of... I'm not even going to try. Okay, I will. Alcazar Zare. Alcazar Zare. The greatest of merchants. Whether you need or whatever you need, we've got it right here. You may never know where Dory might appear next, but you can bet your bottom mora that her stunning wealth has, was gained through her unmatched business sense. Well, maybe you should talk with Paimon. Paimon is something of a businessman herself. Uh, she deals in everything from the academia's greatest secrets to little handmade trinkets. And in the middle lie all the all and sundry outfield dryers, fully automated snowball launchers. And in Sumeru? Is there snow in Sumeru, Dory? And other mysterious goods. I mean, one is a tropical forest, and the other is a desert. Well, no one knows for sure how she gets these items, but all know that so long as you have the more, you can get just about anything you might want from Dory. Yeah. And Dory? Huh. Never would have bet on this combination. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know them very well, but I agree. Why don't you all take a seat and catch your breath? Explain that you're helping out at once you in. Wow. No rest for the wicked. Hey, I'm not wicked. But yes. Well, if the chef here is trusting you to run his whole kitchen, then I've got no doubt we're in for some authentic Leo S specialties. You very much are. I promise to follow the recipes he gives me exactly. I don't promise that they will be the same as whatever cookbook you have uh, read. So why are you all in Leo again? Something about being an onboard consultant? I got my hands on a new boat from Fontaine a while ago, equipped with cutting edge uh -huh. navigation technology. If we nice. manage to spread the word, it could have huge business potential. <laughs> I mean, maybe though, isn't Fontaine already uh, marketing it, it sounds like? Now we're doing some test runs. We sailed from Port Ormos to Rito, then from Rito to Liyue Harbor. Next, nice. we're planning to go to Dornman Port. Dornman Port. Port Ormos, Dornman. Is one of those the uh, mysterious Mondstadt port? Oh, Madame Farazan and me were hired to fine tune the compass and other equipment. We sailed around the Sea of Calds all of last night to put the system through some stress testing. You can just take a nap. This isn't in. That sounds like illegal overtime. Uh, overtime for which they'll both be fairly compensated. They're both here uh, willingly. The contract is crystal clear on that. Are they, though? I believe Farazan is. I'm less, concerned, uh, less convinced about Layla. Cover all your bases, don't you? Or pine on gas. Paying the expenses is part of the compensation, isn't it? No mm. wonder Madame Farozan is going for all the most expensive dishes. Yeah, that's smart. <laughs> it's not every day someone tells you to order whatever you like. Yeah, that's no, dangerous. Stuff. We'll have the. The. <clears throat> Farozan. Uh... Madam Farzan, hmm. that is, while I am more than happy to treat you both to the most expensive dishes on the menu, we must remember that most expensive does not always mean best. Um, very clever, Dory. Very clever. I've heard that the most expensive dishes in Liyue are usually either seafood-based or take an exceptionally long time to prepare. I, I don't know. I, you can always get... One, she asked for one of everything, Dory, so... Now, I don't know about you two, but after so many days at sea, I don't think I can so much as look at another piece of seafood again for at least the foreseeable future. Hmm. That's a shame. Seafood is delicious. Huh. That's actually a good point. You're falling for this, Farazan. You're playing right into her hands. Not to mention that poor Layla here looks like she's about to faint from hunger. Hmm. Huh? I, oh, yeah. That's not because of hunger. Yeah, I was gonna say. She's gonna faint, but from lack of sleep. Surely the wise and virtuous Madame Farazan could not bear to watch her poor student sit here and waste away. Oh, you, Layla's your student. Cool. Oh, well, of course I care about my students' well being, but why do I feel like I'm being tricked? Oh, because you are. So, let's not order anything that'll take too long to prepare. Aside from that, and seafood, we'll take whatever other expensive dishes you have. Over to you, Traveler. Hmm. Well. I'm not sure. I'll have to consult with my consultant. No seafood and nothing that takes too long to cook. The rest is up to you. <laughs> Fair enough. Hmm. I had my eye on a Ductus Temptation, bamboo Ooh. shoot soup, and golden shrimp balls. All good. And I suppose they'll have to wait for the next time. <sighs> but that could be years from now. Well, I can bring some to you. I have, I think I have some of each in my inventory. Oh, Madame Farazan looks so deflated all of a sudden. Um, please still try to choose dishes on the expensive side, okay? <laughs> I will. Don't worry. I'll make sure Dory pays. Quite literally, for this. Phew. Smiley. So, expensive, but no seafood. 
And nothing that takes too long to cook. Right. That rules out pretty much our entire menu. Shoot. Do these people get a kick out of being impossible to please? Well, Dory is more so just trying to bring down the costs. Ugh, that Dory. Is she doing this on purpose? I'd bet more that she is. <laughs> this isn't Leoli Pavilion or Xinhua Kiosk. This is Wangshu Inn. We don't stock up on rare and exotic ingredients. We only get them in if someone puts in a special reservation. Hmm. <sighs> well... If we're stuck with regular ingredients and we're on a time limit, there's only one way to bump up the price. Right. And that's by cooking a dish that uses the chef's expertise and creativity to the fullest. Right. So what do you got for us? As it happens, I know a recipe for something called trembling strings and rushing reeds. Sounds interesting. It can be whipped up quickly with what we already have in the kitchen. One plate usually goes for a 30,000 <laughs> Yeah, it's perfectly expensive. Nice. Can we bump up the price for her? Just, you know, make her sweat. 30000 But if it's quick to make and isn't fancy, what exactly makes it so special? Uh, exclusivity? Quick doesn't have to mean quick and easy. Oh, yeah. To perfect this dish, you need expert knife work and very precise control over the heat. Right. You have to finely slice several different types of meat into fine threads. You sure we're ready to make this? them together into strips, then gently stir fry them in the pan. What you end up with is a whole variety of flavors that come through layer by layer. Are you sure we are skilled enough to make this? This dish is unique in offering a harmonious blend of multiple kinds of meat, all cooked to perfection while still bursting with their own distinct flavors. Do it right, and you've got a culinary masterpiece in your hands. But if you botch it, it's just a bunch of meat thrown on a plate. Or 30,000 Mora. Oh, Paima gets it now. So this dish gets its value not from the ingredients, but the chef's expertise. Yeah, I mean, that's what he said at the beginning, Paimon. You think I'll be able to pull it off? That is the million, the 30,000 more question. No, don't worry. I can take care of the kneading and other prep work for you. you. Sure? You just focus on bringing it all together. If you say so. Believe in yourself. You can do this. And if you mess it up, I'm almost to be happy to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you will. You're my garbage disposal, Paimon. And I gotta fatten you up. You know, for when I eat you. Someday. Trembling strings and rushing reeds. Got ham, beef, chicken or fowl, salt and pepper. Oh. A stir fried dish made from a variety of meats that has layers, like an onion or an ogre or a parfait. Even entire floors of flavor. Simple ingredients, unique creativity, and an intricate cooking process makes this an unparalleled delicacy fit for any gourmet seeking the very finest of flavors. They say in Liyue that lutes have five strings and flutes have seven apertures, and that this dish is correspondingly made with five meats and seven side dishes. Oh, I only see three meats here, though. That said, it is doubtful that any chefs could make a dish as complicated as the story claims. Let's serve them up. I thought he said he was going to prepare the prep work. Alright. There we go. Uh-oh. Foul, foul, foul. Went fast suddenly. There we go. I like watching her cook. Okay, let's mix things up. Oof. Getting faster and narrower. And, oh, that was close. You should be happy. All 
right. Here we go. Ooh, gotcha. Perfect. I like how she just stares at the dish with a happy look on her face for a few seconds and then gets the serious look on her face again. Um... No, that isn't the right plate. This one. Actually, maybe that is. Okay, that is. Go with the clouds adorn the sunrise. And this looks like it would go well, well with some tea. you hear the price of this dory Ooh, smells delightful it looks delightful oh we meant to ask have you two eaten breakfast yet if not why don't you join us at the table yeah i'm not paying for this uh did dory just offer us a free meal why did she become so generous good instinct paimon i don't trust her <laughs> let's not forget that the biggest business deals are settled over a meal uh -oh. come on come on come <laughs> on sit down and join us everyone dig in using that classic merchant pushiness that makes it hard to uh refuse this dish looks simple enough and i did my research so surely it can't cost all that much worst case scenario maybe ten thousand mora <laughs> This dish had better be worth working overtime all night for. Well, Traveler, this is the moment of truth. It, I think it will be. Oh, so tired. So sleepy. Oh, I feel bad I for her. I just wanna eat up and get to bed. You should just, you should just go to sleep. Harboring their is private this concerns. Foul? Yes. Oh, wait. No, the texture is more like shroom boar. Uh, it, it, it's it's foul. There's a different flavor in every bite. And the discerning palate might detect a hint of something smoked, too. Our eyes are shaking from <laughs> bears. Quite marvelous. How is this made? The smokiness is from the ham. That was my addition. I, was it? Ham? But I don't see any ham anywhere. Oh... <gasps> Are your triangles different shades of blue? Neat. Haha, <laughs> so you've noticed. Yep, every single strip is kneaded from several different kinds of meat. Paimon and Yan Xiao put in a lot of effort to make it just right. Paimon, did you actually help? Really, really? Color me skeptical. Uh, so I am not an expert or anything. But don't different meats have different cooking times? Uh, uh, how is everything in this dish cooked to perfection? Um, I just followed the instructions. I'm sorry, Layla. Well, you see, um, that's a trade secret. <laughs> it's a matter of practice. I know some special cooking techniques. Wow. So this dish really is one of a kind. That makes the whole trip worth it. By the way, does this special dish have a name? It does. Ah, Paimon forgot to mention that part. The dish is called Trembling Strings and Rushing Reeds, alluding to the way that the different threads of meat are woven together, and also the complex layers of flavor, yes? Yeah. Akin to the harmonies of a musical ensemble? Kinda. The name, if I'm not mistaken is a Leo idiom that evokes a vigorous orchestral performance featuring both stringed and wind instruments playing together. Mm, quite an apt name for this dish. Damn, Farazan. Uh, how did you know all that? I mean, she's a very well-read scholar, I guess. Every student has to master at least 20 languages before they graduate. Uh. Wait. Is that not a requirement anymore? 20 languages? That's, that's, that's... Too many. Way, way, way too many. 
especially master. Uh, huh? Oh, that used to be a thing. I'm with you, Layla. Oh, I almost forgot that you're also from Harabatat. Harabatat. So, um, anyway, how much does this dish cost? Well, it's a little. You you are close. Oh, don't worry, not too much. That'll be uh, 30,000 more, please and thank you. <laughs> that look on Paimon's face. <laughs> that is the best Paimon face to date. The crooked smile. <laughs> oh my god. 30,000? 30, 30,000. <laughs> your, your plan backfired. Probably would have been cheaper to... Uh, Pick one of the seafood dishes or something. Uh, about that, Paimon, traveler, I merely invited you to join us at the table, did I not? I knew it. I believe I committed to paying for you. I freaking knew it, you little. So, perhaps we could split the bill accordingly? No. Oh, Paimon knew it was too good to be true. 30,000 more surely isn't an outrageous amount for the most magnanimous Lord Senga... Sangama Bay. Yeah! As a famous merchant, you've got a reputation to uphold. Of course. What kind of merchant can't afford a nice big old meal to close some business that we didn't really close? <laughs> but every single mora matters, you know? Yeah, that's why I'm not paying a cent. <sighs> all right, all right. I'll just consider that the cost of learning about this dish. Good. Next time, don't try to cheat, you know, your employees, and, well, you won't come out so in the red. Once I'm back in Sonero, I'll be sure to find someone to help me recreate the dish. And then, and then, I'll make it all back. <laughs> well, good luck with that. I feel so much better now that I've gotten some food in me. Oh, that's good. Delicious food really does wonders for one's spirit. Now, go up stairs or whatever, wherever, wherever the beds are at this inn, and go to bed. Go to sleep. You clearly need it. I never thought you'd take on such strenuous work. Uh, uh, my advisor said that young people shouldn't stay cooped up in the academia all the time. Uh, they told me that I should take the chance to get out and see the stars in other skies. That's good advice, but take care of yourself, please. Looking at you makes me exhausted. Oh, uh, maybe I can think of it as my first internship experience? I mean... Uh, but it sure is exhausting. Oh. Is this uh. at all related to your research? Like, at all? If so, if not, I don't think you really could consider an internship experience. Or it related to your line of work at all, even. It sounds like Dory just dragged you and Farzan along. Still not sure what she's consulting about. Now, how should I justify a high price tag for a dish without any fancy ingredients? Huh. Maybe start by giving it a fancy sounding name? Hmm, a good start. Um, by the way, the whole spiel about no seafood and not taking too long to cook. To be honest, you chose Wang Shu in to try and save money, didn't you? Uh I should have known you'd see through me. <laughs> well, you probably didn't become wealthy by being generous, that's for sure. Everyone was exhausted and seasick when I made the offer last night, so I figured they probably wouldn't be able to eat all that much today. Well, you saw how that turned out. I did. And I am very happy with how it turned out. I tried placing some limitations on the order to keep costs under control, but you still found a way around my schemes. With pleasure. <sighs> That's what I get for not thoroughly researching the market beforehand. Well, I'm sure I'd have found some way of, uh, getting around it. Hey, you're not even 
paying those too much of a salary. Just treat them fairly next time and don't be so stingy. Thank you, Paimon. I mean, I pay... Well, I don't really pay Paimon. I guess I pay her in food. She eats through my wallet, I swear. You're one to talk, Paimon. You freeload whenever you get the chance. Well, yeah, but that's why Paimon's qualified to talk about this. <laughs> I guess, from a distorted point of view. <laughs> Fair enough, Paimon. Tarzan, what are you looking at? Even though I didn't get to try Adeptus Temptation or Bamboo Shoot Soup, this trembling strings and rushing reeds was still quite impressive. Mm, you're... Thank you for making it. You're welcome. I'm more than willing to treat you to some Adeptus, Tem Adeptus Temptation or Bamboo Shoot Soup. In fact, we could go get uh, Zhongli. He would l He's always down for Bamboo Shoot Soup, I swear. He loves the stuff. I think all the Adepti do. Never thought you'd take a job away from any ruins. Well, about that. Even though newfangled contraptions are hardly my cup of tea, Dory's offer was quite enticing. Really? What did she offer you exactly? She said that every time we stopped at a new harbor, I'd be free to go and pick out some ancient books at the market and bring them back to Sumeru. Ah. Uh, and how many have you gotten so far? <laughs> I couldn't resist an offer like that. So I offered to join for the lowest possible pay to undercut <laughs> all my Kasharawar competitors. <laughs> Kasharawar competitors. Did you have any competitors? I somehow doubt you did. Well done, Dory. I'm almost... I'm impressed and also... Uh, mostly, uh, mostly just impressed. Well, Smiley. I like the dish. We're off to a good start this morning. Keep up the good work. I'm counting on you. Uh, we'll... We're here for you. Work till closing time. Alright. Oh, I'm getting these recipes. Very nice. Alright. Time for day three. Mr. Yan Chow. Morning. Time to fire up the stove for another day of customers. Thanks again. Good morning, and you are more than welcome. I mean, as long as I'm getting paid, I'm more than happy to help out. Days of experience under your belt, the work has become Great second work. nature. Well, you're looking more like a head chef every day. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever crazy characters come walking through that door, I know you'll be able to handle them. Oh no. Who's coming through that door? Sino? Maybe? Hmm. Wait, no! Every time you say something, I'll <laughs> jinx it! Yeah, I'm a Paimon on this. Hey, that's not true. Anyway, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> oh! Even better. Mr. Ito himself. Dude, what up, bro? I didn't know you were in Liyue too. Ah, it's always nice to run into a Brody and a Zuma yeah. fellow. But uh, wait, did I say that right? Uh, no. But also, I don't care. Get to see you again, and you too, Shinobu. Who looks already done with <laughs> Ito's shit. Almost. I think you meant fellow Inazuman abroad, boss. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 that's the one. Yeah, we gotta look out for each other oh. when we're this far from home. Don't we, Ayato? That's who you're talking to. I don't think I've actually met uh, Ayato in game yet. Not sure where he shows up actually. But where his first official showing is. Probably one of the Inazuma events. Inazuma events I didn't do. <laughs> well, I am good friends with your sister, Kamisato Ayato. But those who know him well, oh, wait, wait. wait. The young but accomplished clan head of the Yashiro Commission's Kamisato clan, Kamisato Ayato, is gentle and polite in his manners and is a highly capable operator. On the surface, he seems like a down-to-earth, elegant, and proper fellow who does not enjoy public appearances or showing off. But those who know him well know how never to underestimate him. 
for it was he who steadied the Kamisato clan ship when the previous commissioner had fallen gravely ill. His present position is not one that could have been secured without extraordinary skill or brilliance, so beware his immaculate smile at all times. Hmm. Oh, whoa, Tucker! What are you doing here? Paimon, don't sound like you aren't happy to see him. Huh? Oh, hey, Flying Lavender Melon! Uh, of the <laughs> sky cleaving white iron variety. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and my compadre, too! Good to all see my you. in one place! God, today's my lucky day! It's my lucky day, is what I was thinking. Yeah. Man, we just saw you not that long ago. Are you sure you have the funds to be here? Aren't you saving up so you can uh, one day train your beetle properly to beat that fish up? Under Globa? You're going to train under Globa? Didn't you say you were going to knuckle down and earn some more yeah. at home? How come you're back in Lyra so soon? I, that's what I was saying, Paimon. Thank you. Ah, that could wait. As soon as I announce that Arataki Ito is available for hire, they'll be throwing Mora at me. Oh, no. Right now, I got a more urgent situation to attend to. I'm in the mood for some good, spicy food. <laughs> Very urgent. <laughs> Does that mean you haven't actually earned any Mora? How are you paying for this trip to Liyue? Oh, and uh, while we're here, we were going to also see if Grandmaster Hanakato's okay and whatnot. Well, that's good. He can afford to be here, though. The look on Shinobu's face says, seems to say, don't ask. Well, for, sh for no Shinobu's sake, we'll abide by her wish. So what about you, Ayato? Not too long ago, I heard a rumor that someone was hosting an Onikabuto fighting contest in the... Yeah. They were. Naturally, I came here as soon as I could. But, alas, it was too late. That's a shame you wanted to take part. Do you like beetle fighting, Ayato? I love that. What? You missed it? Aw, oh, man, what a bummer. It was amazing. You missed quite the event. Quite the bummer, indeed. <laughs> Though all is not lost. Since you're here, you'll be able to tell me all about it. He can. I'm sure he's more than willing. <laughs> sure thing, my man. But uh, let's catch up over some food, huh? Where's the chef, anyway? Uh, hey, get the chef out here. I got compadres to feed. <laughs> yes, you do. Actually, both of you are going to be in the next version, right? Yeah. I think. I know Ito was. I think Ayato was. I'm the chef. Yeah, sure. Me too. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, I'm the chef. Wow. Well, Chucker set up that one for us really nicely. <laughs> Gotta give him some credit for that. But the main chef is another guy. I'm a temp. Uh, <laughs> good one, compadre. You almost got me there. All right, well, uh, get the chef out here. You're looking at her. Oh, I guess he wants to see Yansho. Yan, uh, so, Yansho. uh, may I take your order? <laughs> if you're entertaining guests, I can recommend the palace jewels, a trembling strings and rushing reeds, or... Ah, uh, we're not gonna do the same dish twice. Boss, don't forget the budget. <laughs> the cheapest dish you have. Steamed rice. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, um, uh, got anything a little more, uh, down to earth? Oof. <laughs> yeah, we do. Probably. Down to earth. Oh, well, well, we do a mean humbly enough. Real hearty dish with a ton of flavor, and we don't skimp on the portion size either. That'd be the best value for your Mora. Hmm, that sounds good. I mean, Ito probably eats a lot too, so the portion size is important. Though Ayato's rich, he could probably help. Humbly enough, huh? Oh, sounds like my kind of grub. We'll take that. No need for anything fancy. We're all friends here. We are all friends here, aren't we? But I didn't even know you were friends with Ayato. Excellent choice, Ito. I didn't know we were friends with I'm Ayato. I'm no fan of culinary ostentation either. <laughs> Sometimes a bro just knows. <laughs> hmm? uh, it's a weird coming out of your mouth, Ayato. Someone who looks so fancy. A bro just knows. Yes, a bro just knows. <laughs> <laughs> bros don't suppose. Those bros just knows. <laughs> I didn't know I needed these two together, but apparently I did. <laughs> I mean, I always need more Ito in my life, but... 
this is for later. real. Paimon's leaving you guys to it. Don't you enjoy it, Paimon? I enjoy it. I love these guys. Where'd Shinobu go? Seriously, if I blinked, I would have missed a crimson staff. Just launched itself at Bloom Pruner and sent it flying. Well, a severely weakened Bloom Pruner. I'd expect no less of the bona fide Beetle Battle King himself. <laughs> it sounds like a truly epoch defining <laughs> duel. Hearing that come out of your mouth is amazing. Oh my. Uh, Shinobu, are you, are you around here? Oh, there you are. You sure you guys can afford to be here? <sighs> the air was getting stifling, so I made some excuses and slipped away. Anyway, I mean, thanks for taking the hint earlier. I'll fill you in later. I'll hold you to that. I'm very interested. Also, the air might not be so stifling if you didn't always wear that. Uh, well, I don't know how well you can breathe through that thing. It doesn't look like cloth. It always looked like metal to me, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Yun Chao. Gotta say, your friend's quite a character. He is. Still, he's great. enough isn't that hard to make, so I don't think we'll have any problems with this order. Yeah, no, he won't be picky. Actually, why is it called humbly enough anyway? A hearty meat dish is a good start, but in Paimon's experience, one humble dish is never enough. Uh, I said it was hearty, but I never said it contained meat. Oh. Don't be fooled by the appearance. It's actually just tofu, made to look and taste like meat. Tofu? I'm not sure if our talkie's gonna be okay with that, but... Wait! Tofu's made of beans, isn't it? Oh! Oh, Bojaka can't eat that! Guess we should get them to pick something else instead. Oh, no. What's the issue? I think I caught the word tofu. You did. Wait, Also, what are you doing? The, the kitchen is staff members only. <laughs> <sighs> Never mind. I'll let it slide. Ma'am, could you possibly ask your boss to order something else I instead? actually did not know he was allergic to beans. I assume it's allergic. <laughs> no one gets my bro Ayato like I do. <laughs> I hereby declare that humbly enough will be an everlasting symbol oh, of our no. friendship. Or my name ain't Ataki oh. Ito. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't think we can change the dish. Hey, Where's our food at? Hurry up! I'm almost done recounting the epic adventures of Crimson Staff. Coming, Ito. Shoot. Can we play replace the tofu with something cheap? Uh, as you can see, changing the order may be a little difficult. We gotta sub the tofu, dude. Oh, brother. His whole ego is riding on this, huh? It is. Even if we break the news to him, he'd probably rather eat the tofu than eat his words. <laughs> Good way to put it. We locked in that. We're locked in now. We gotta cook that dish. How about we throw some free appetizers in? Sounds good. I'll make sure he fills up on those. We'll just have to play the rest by ear. Yeah. What are we actually making then? As an appetizer. Enjoy you and chilies. He did want spicy. Fragrant and nostalgic Liwa style dish. One's number one choice for a hearty tucking in. This dish requires one to craft the colors and aromas of meat from tofu, which demands much of the chef's seasoning skills. Word has it that this dish was designed for those with older folks with weakened teeth. Perhaps it is also a chef's duty to ensure that all people can enjoy good food. I hope all people can enjoy good food. It's half the fun of living. All right, you got this, traveler. Ready? Chop this tofu. Very good. Chili time. Excellent. Oh, wow, eight of them now. Damn. Well, we got it. Okay. 
prepare the diced jwayun chili, sugar, etc. and mix the sauce. Got it. Nice. Time to cook it. Very good, Traveler. Quite the chef. Ooh, look at that. Is that tofu? Doesn't look like tofu at all to me. And I think we'll actually go with this as is. humbly enough you guys don't mess around Woo! love me that portion size <laughs> you fill up maybe come on compadre grab a seat we're all friends here so don't hold back i'm just gonna dig right in please don't oh no <laughs> look on his face <clears throat> boss we should respect the local customs here in liyue it's polite to let the guests eat first mm, good save shinobu polite uh shinobu I thought old-timey traditions weren't your style. Now that I've finished in the kitchen, I'm a guest too. Huh? Are you kidding me, compadre? Oh, wait, I get it. The food smells so dang good, now everyone's dying to go first. <laughs> well, guess I only got my own good taste to blame. Go <laughs> on, dive in. I'll wait till last. Good. Everyone? Well, I can I can count on Paimon to take more, of her sh more than her share. Ah... Uh. Oh, with it, Ayato. You, Paimon, Ayato, and Shinobu help yourselves, leaving very little <laughs> meal for him. I see. Do you? Finally, it's my turn. I spy a big chunk of deliciousness <laughs> with my name on it. <laughs> I love him. Wait, don't. <laughs> Paimon. Huh? Wait, what is it now? You got this, Paimon. You know the drill. Huh? Okay, here goes. <laughs> I forgot to tell you the really cool origin story of this dish. Pi what? What origin story, Paimon? Origin story? Dude, who cares where it came from? We all know where it's going. <laughs> Am I right? Down the gullet. <laughs> Shoot. Paimon. Uh, well, um, skipping the origin story is like, like going traveling without a tour guide. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Especially when you don't manage to eat any of it. Paimon makes an astute observation. Much as every tea must be appreciated on its own terms, is it not a waste of the chef's goodwill to sample a dish without hearing its tale? Good assist, Ayato. My compadre's goodwill, huh? Oh, can't have that going to waste. All right, then. Give me the full story. I'm all ears. <laughs> <laughs> That's more like it. Let's start with the ingredients. <laughs> Actually. Oh, no. no. Let's start with the story of Wang Xuan, uh, which starts with the history <laughs> of Dihua March. How long is this going to go for, Paimon? Now's our chance, Traveler. Do you even know all of this history, Paimon? Got it. You should have gobbled down the dish. Man, the tale of Dihua Marsh hits hard. People in the past had it pretty rough. Yeah. You appreciate what you got. Humbly enough, yeah. That's a good way to think about life. Damn. I want to hear what Paimon said to him. Darn. There's no sad way to tofu from here. How did we get so off topic? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, good news is there's only a little bit left. Yeah. We are, did you just burp? But we're already beyond stuffed. That's a bomb. That's a... Paimon, you got this. Finish that meal. Oh, compadre, Shinobu, have you been eating this whole time? Save me some dregs, why don't you? <laughs> I'm sorry, Ito. This is for your own good. I just promise you. That's it. I'm done waiting. It's my turn to eat. <laughs> Wait, boss, that's made of... One moment, Ito. I have a small request, if you would be so kind as to consider oh, it. Good save, Ito. I left home in a hurry, and... 
was unable to bring any of my family with me. Oh, they both heard so much about you and are huge admirers of the Arataki gang. So they will be devastated to learn that they missed out on this opportunity. That is sad. Everyone is, uh, should be a great admirer of the Arataki gang. However, if you were willing to let me bring the remaining portion of Humbly Enough back to them, I'm sure it will help <laughs> to lift their spirits. I don't think that food is going to keep for that trip. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Boss, you got to do right by your friends. They're pretty big on that in Liwe. Besides, <laughs> you did eat quite a lot of the grilled fish while we were waiting for the main course. Ooh, I mean, Aito, I think, is much like Paimon, an endless pit for food. Including mine and Ayato's. Ooh. Aito. Huh? Oh, those were for you guys? Ah, oh, dang it. I got too carried away telling that story, didn't I? <laughs> you might have. In that case, pass my regards to your fan, bro. El Chefe, can yes. we get the rest of this to go? I, I I think so. Probably. Do we have to go boxes? We probably have to go boxes. Um I really don't think it's gonna keep all the way to Inazuma though. Count Crushmore. Uh what? instant kill. Yeah? I never knew there were so many elite beetle fighters in Liwa. Oh yeah, those are their names. I remember the instant kill especially. You didn't really come for the Oni Kabuto fighting contest, did you? I mean, he's a man of good taste, traveler. <laughs> Can you imagine? That would be tardiness of the most unfashionable variety. Mm. No, in truth, this trip is part business, part leisure. Came for the lantern right then? Though you really should have come for the beetle fighting. It, is, it was amazing. Every visitor has their own agenda. For some, the festivities are all the more reason to visit. For others, all the more reason to avoid the crowds. Hmm. Well. In any case, one way or another, I seem to have ended up in the right place at the right time. Now, as for the leftover tofu... Yes, I'm sure Toma will dispose of it as he sees fit. Dispose of it? As in eat it or toss it in the garbage? Give it to a pup. Well, see you over there, Shinobu. Ito. I have to get back to the docks as soon as this meal is done. So why did you really come to Liyue? Well, uh, thing is... Don't hide from me. I can explain. Boss recently found work as a sailor, which allowed oh. him to hitch a ride here. Well done, Ito. That's good work for you. Scrubbing the decks... Hoisting the sails, something, something. After the ship docked, he had some free time to do as he pleases. He's been using that time to hang out with Grandmaster Hanakato. Nice. And apparently making a tri the trip all the way to Wangshu in to randomly eat food. Just because he's here already. No other reason. Of course. Not because you like him. Or, you know, he's it's not like he's your best friend. Actually, who is your best friend? Is it me? Is it Shinobu? Grandmaster Hanakado? Flying Lavender Melon, maybe? That was fun. But I think it's time for... The final one Looks soon. Looks like that's all sorted. All right. Take some time to collect yourself. The next big group is coming in. We'll be ready. The rest of the day passes without incident. So we've had Fontaine, Sumeru, and Inazuma. I wonder if we'll have like Monster or Liyue next. Probably not Liyue. Since we are in Liyue and these are all visitors to Liyue. Alright. Final set of guests how time flies my burns are almost healed now so That's i should good. be ready to take back the kitchen tomorrow well it's been fun 
I am excited to see who the last guests are. You've really gone above and beyond these past few days. Last day today. Here's hoping we get through it without incident. There is going to be an incident, but it won't be a bad one. Uh, why does Paimon feel like you just jinxed us again? <laughs> I mean, Paimon, don't you enjoy seeing all of our friends we've made from around the world? Come on. Really? A day passes without incident? <sighs> huh. We made it all the way to the evening. It ended up being a pretty smooth day after all. Maybe it's because we've gotten so experienced at running this whole thing. I guess. No. We need more friends, more guests. We've come a long way since our first day on the job, haven't we? Hmm. Yeah. Back then, we were struggling to remember who ordered what. You were. But everything's a piece of cake now. Don't make yourself hungry. Don't get ahead of yourself. The day is still isn't over yet. This late in the evening. For dinner, a lot of people. Uh, actually, now that Paimon oh. thinks that Lenny and his siblings came around about this time the first day, didn't they? Look, you, uh, Amber. It was Monstat. Mika. Traveler? Paimon? Fancy seeing you two here. It is good to see you. It's been a while, hasn't it? Amber? And you and Mika, too! Are you here for dinner? Why so late in the day? <laughs> for because it's dinner, Paimon. We just finished an escort mission for a merchant caravan. The original plan was to make do with some rations for this evening and well, continue that's our no trip good. north towards Stonegate. Much better to stop here at the Wangshu Inn, yeah. We have some uh fun music. The Captain Shenanigans are afoot. That none of us have eaten Liyue cuisine for quite some time. We thought we might as well swing by the inn and see if we can still order something. I think you can. Ooh, so this is Eula's treat, huh? <clears throat> <laughs> We've been eating the same rations for the entire trip, so I simply thought it was high time we had ourselves a proper meal. Do you have a problem with that? No, certainly not a vengeance-exacting-worthy problem. Well, welcome to Wangshu Inn. Good question. What should we get? Hmm? Wait a sec. Why are you taking our order? Uh, we are the chef for today. The traveler's been filling in for the chef here. You come at just the right time. You'll be the last customers to enjoy his cooking before the original chef takes back the reins. Did you just say his? I'm on. Wow, really? Good thing Eula suggested we come here. I wouldn't want to miss this. So, what shall we get? Hmm, I'm not as familiar with Liyue cuisine as I used to be. Mm. Mika, Eula, what are you in the mood for? I might recommend Jade Parcells. Those are really good. Anything goes. I'm just looking forward to trying the honorary night's cooking for myself. <laughs> I'm you sure it'll be... be a great learning opportunity for me. You won't be disappointed, Mika. Hmm, something small, I suppose. We have to hit the road again after we eat. Beyond that, anything goes. Hmm, okay. Wasn't it your idea to come here, though? Sheesh, this is like getting blood from a stone. <laughs> All right, guess it's up to you, Amber. You name it, we'll cook it. Come on, Amber. Huh? Then I guess... Eh, I don't really mind either. Anything goes. Damn it, Amber. I still love how her bow looks like bunny ears. Ah! I don't make us pick this. I don't know anything about your guys' palettes. Shoot. I'm sorry. I really can't think of anything off the top of my head. I mean, I could pick from the menu at random, but I'd feel more comfortable leaving the chef to choose. Do you, can you at least tell me if you like spicy stuff or not? Oh, one thing. I know I said I don't mind what we have, but no alcohol, please. Neither of them can drink. It's a real pity. Are you guys underage? Mika wouldn't surprise me, but Amber, you too. Uh, I've still got some sparkling water here. Aw. I've never really cared for sparkling water. I just like regular water. With the wind. Well, Yansho, it's time for our final meal. Anything goes, huh? Oh dear. 
This is a chef's worst nightmare. No kidding. With no idea of your customers' palates, you're left to make a wild guess. That's what I was saying. I, I don't even know if they want something spicy or not. Best to play it safe. No spice. Nothing too spicy. Still, now that you've worked in the kitchen for so many days, I have faith that you'll oh, be able to you figure dick. it out. Go on. Show them what you've got. Passing the torch to me. Come on. What do they... Let me think. What do they like? What could they be craving? I don't know. What am I going to make? Anything goes. We've got some bamboo shoot. Some uh, ham, an egg, flour, snapdragon. Is this going to be bamboo shoot soup or just called anything goes? A simple dish filled with rice, uh, uh, filled with rich flavors straight from the wok. Made with from stir-fried ham, bird eggs, rice, and all manner of other ingredients. Oh, is that rice, not flour? So it's kind of a fried rice dish. Um, they say that the Marriott recipes for fried rice have resulted in it being considered the first choice for those who don't know what to eat at the moment. I kind of have to agree. Fried rice is so good. Um, of note is the fact that this simple dish is, in truth, quite the comprehensive test of a chef's capabilities. Only skill and will, they say, will get you a dish that brings back memories of home. Fair enough. Let's do it. Final dish, Traveler. Ham, bamboo shoots, and snapdragon. The bamboo shoots seem like a pain to prepare, but... Not too bad. The snapdragon is apparently worse. Oof, we got it, though. Prepare the bird eggs and snapdragon and mix the eggs. Oh, we gotta do four. All right. Oof. Last one. Got it. I'm with you, uh, Traveler. I am curious what happens if you mess it all up, but I assume Paimon eats it and you start over. Okay, two rounds of cooking. Oof, gotcha. Nice. Beautiful fried rice. Mmm, looks so good, too. Yeah, I think this is fitting. Mmm, this is delicious. Perfectly seasoned, and even the rice is bursting with flavor. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed it, Mika. The chef appreciates your compliments. Nothing like a piping hot meal served straight from the stove. I've missed this. Mm. <laughs> You've that is a lot of rice. field rations to shame, and that's no mean feat. <laughs> so tell us, traveler, what's this one called? It are your field rations actually that good, Eula? I wouldn't have thought so. It's come. Um, Pinot's guessing we can't just call it anything goes, right? I'm sure. Why not? Oh hell, Pyman doesn't know how to explain this dish at all. It's got no name. It's just basic ingredients, simply cooked. <laughs> well, the cat's out of the bag. It's fried rice. Delicious, delicious fried rice. I mean, that's just the heart of fried rice, isn't it? Ingredients you have lying around, tossed into the wok, the rice and the oil and whatever seasonings you prefer. Soy sauce. Maybe oyster sauce. I don't know. Basic ingredients? Simply cooked? Really? I could have sworn that you put something fancy in here, or gave it some kind of chef's magic touch. We did. It is called love. 
This isn't the finest dish in the world, but it's the one you need to right. You need it's right now. It's the finest dish in the world, but the one they need right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you've lost Paimon. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, you've been on the road for a long time, and you've only been eating field rations this entire time. So you mean, we only think this is delicious because we're so hungry? No. Hmm. There's got to be more to it than that. I mean, if you're hungry, you will find it more delicious, but... Perhaps the fact that the aroma of freshly cooked hot food is a welcome change from cold pre-prepared rations. That too. Oh, kind of like the feeling of waking up to the smell of freshly baked bread in the morning? Yeah. Huh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's almost mm. like we're back at Good Hunter again. Freshly baked bread. Delicious. Uh, but Good Hunter's in Mondstadt. Why make a point of trying Lele cuisine if you can't even taste the difference? <laughs> Fine, well, don't get upset about it. It's okay. Oh, I'm not talking about the taste. I just meant the feeling of comfort, you know? It's like the feeling of coming home. Mmm. You haven't actually eaten all of it. That's a lot of fried rice. You guys should, that That's more than three people's worth. I guess Paimon can clean the plate, but... Comfort. Coming home. Yeah. Well, Yan Xiao did say we want to make our guests feel right at home. Yeah, and fried rice is a perfect comfort food. What makes uh, for a tasty dish is highly subjective. But a chef caters to all comers. Gotta put ourselves in their shoes. And that's the chef's passion for putting smiles on customers' faces. Look at you giving a nice little speech, Traveler. Becoming a chef in your own right. So in other words, the secret ingredient is passion? That's basically what I said. Love. Well, a little different. L putting love into your food. It's kind of like saying you have passion for making it. Despite how terribly cliched that sounds, I'll admit that it holds true for this meal. <laughs> well played. Mark my words. I'll remember this recipe. <laughs> we make it sound so threatening, Eula. <laughs> well, I mean, it's simple fried rice, so I'm sure you will. Okay, but you can't really have a recipe without a name, though, right? Have we come up with a name for this dish yet? I haven't really thought that far. Any ideas? Hmm. How about right at home? Oh, that's nice. Right at home. Well, Eula, was this good enough to not make you swear vengeance on me? The rations we brought were adapted for my signature moon pies. Oh. To come up with something even tastier. I gotta hand it to you. You did a great job. Thank you. Hmm. You know who also love, loves moon pies? Diluc. I hear. Still, please do drop by and try a few Stormcrest pies next time you're in town. Of course. I insist. I will do so. You know, you haven't sworn vengeance in a long time, I feel like. I guess this means we're good friends. Amber. Hmm. What's up, Amber? Uh, sorry. I zoned out just now. Didn't see you coming. Yeah, I noticed. Got something on your mind. Yeah, that food you cooked for us just now? It reminded me of the meals my grandfather used to make for me. Aw. I thought I'd forgotten how they tasted, but it all came rushing back. Hey, that makes me happy. He used to make Liyue dishes all the time. I do my Outrider training with him until the evening, then wait patiently at the dinner table. That is so sweet, Amber. I'm glad I could do that for you. I'd sit there with the smell of delicious food wafting in from the kitchen, waiting mm. for him to finally emerge with the goods. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we'd have Eula around for dinner. And even though she'd always find something to complain about, <laughs> I could tell she really enjoyed the food. Yeah, that's Eula. Ah, so maybe she remembers too. Though, why does it feel like you're talking in the past tense? Your grandfather isn't dead, is he? Maybe that's why she suggested you come here for dinner? <laughs> Your words, not mine. Don't ask her about it. She'll only give you another earful. Yeah, I suppose. It really was nice to see you again. It has been far too long. I have been building you up, though. Maybe I'll be able to use you again, uh, someday. This could be 
Ah, there you are, Mika. Back when I was on the expedition with the Grand Master, yeah. I was often put in charge of cooking. Hmm. You a good cook, Mika? Oh, so what? I really want to meet the Grand Master. What's he like? Under the circumstances, I could only cook some pretty crude meals. But everyone still enjoyed them a lot. Maybe passion was the secret ingredient then, too. Maybe. Though, I'll be honest, Mika. Passion isn't enough on its own. <laughs> you can passionately make some terrible dishes. Ah, there you are. And there's the boss, too. Oh, and there's the puppy. Good. Good. Oh, yeah. Good puppy. Oh. There you are. Thank you for all of your hard work over the past few days. You are very welcome. My pleasure. Assuming I'm still being paid, that is. Yeah, that's the important question. Oh, wait. Those are all the dishes we made. <laughs> straight down to brass tacks, are we? Damn straight. Here. Take it. I've thrown in a little extra as well. Call it a bonus. Thank Hard work you. is rewarded here. Excellent. Maybe I should uh work full time in the kitchen here. Yay! It's like all the tiredness and stress have suddenly melted away. That is the magic of payday, Paimon. I'm just lucky you only worked on this job for a few days. <laughs> At the rate you were progressing, a few more weeks and I think I might be made redundant. Well, I mean, if he's ever at Hawaiian, if you're ever looking for another chef. Well, I for one was looking for, or I for one look forward to enjoying your cooking many more times in the future. <laughs> Anytime. Bring some friends with you next time, and I'll show you all what Smiley Yenshao can do when working with both hands intact. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sh I'll be sure to do so. Great! Although, just to be on the safe side, cook carefully in the meantime. <laughs> you may have just jinxed it again. You, he might have. That was fun. Dishes. A vivid sample that faithfully recreates the colors and textures of that day. Bring memories to the fore on sight. Shame it can't be eaten. Oh. Is it going to just be here permanently? That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's get our rewards. All right. Well, I think that's where you are. we are going to end it for now. Next time, we have books to read. <laughs> oh, that was adorable. And uh, other than that, I think we'll be doing the um, story, a few of the story quests character story quests. So that'll be fun. Howdy. Please, head straight on in.